welcome to Zines and Roger. This is a tutorial for a mesh bag because mesh bags are all the rage at the minute and um, I'll show you how to make this one so you can have one for yourself. It's very very simple. You need one ball of 50 gram cotton. This is double knit cotton, it's DMC Natura Just Cotton. It is if I can find a thingy, 155 metres or 175 yards across, across, in total. Um, if you can find equivalents, that's great. I think Rico Essentials has one that's very similar, apart from it's just a few metres shorter than this one, but I've made this bag in that yarn, so I don't see why you, you wouldn't have a problem. You need a three millimetre hook, and a stitch marker and that will help you find your, your start of each round because believe me they are tricky to spot if you don't bother with a stitch marker. They, um, you'll notice that this one has three rounds on the bottom but actually the, um, the new pattern I've updated it slightly to make it even easier than this one um, it has four rounds so um, let's get started. If I just jump on it in with a slightly bigger hook and a slightly thicker yarn just so you can see um, you start off with a magic loop, magic ring and if you don't want to use a magic ring then chain four and join that with a slip stitch. Chain three to count as your first stitch and then work um, 11 UK trebles or US doubles into the ring When you've made 11 stitches plus your 3 chain, you'll have 12 stitches around. Pull your magic loop closed and then join with a slip stitch to the top of the 3 chain. can be fiddly but it's um, worth taking your time over so slip stitch that through and that's round one and you'll have 12 stitches to start round two chain three to count as your first stitch and then in the same space make another treble, US double and you're going to make, oops, cotton can be a bit splitty in each stitch around you want two stitches two UK trebles, two US doubles been around and made two stitches in each stitch so I've got 24 now I had 12 on the first round I've got 24 now so I'll join these with a slip stitch as well and then for round three it's very similar apart from you're only doing increases every other every other stitch so you'll end up with 36 stitches at the end of this one so chain three to start and then one treble in the same space. Oops. In the next stitch you just want one stitch. And then an increase of two. One. Two. So you just want to go around one, two, one, two, one, two until you get to the end, which should be a one, and then you join with a slip stitch, and then you can bin, begin row four. So I'll meet you at that point. I'm on round four, and I've done two trebles in that first stitch, that's chain three and a treble, and then the next 
two stitches it's just one treble and then the increase is in the, the next one. So the pattern here is um, two trebles in one stitch, then just one treble, one treble, and then two trebles. So here in the next two stitches it's just one treble. And at the end you'll have 48 stitches and then after that we can start making the mesh. So an increase next. So yeah, go all the way around, join with a slip stitch ready to start the main body of the bag. Right, round four is done. It's time to start with the chains. To begin, um, I move my hand through the camera and then um, chain one and then uh, make a DC US SC stitch in the same place. I'm sorry if I jog the camera but my hand is threaded through the tripod. So that's the first stitch of round five, chain three and then you want to miss the first stitch there and make a DC into the next one and that is the pattern repeat, chain three, miss a stitch and then a DC in the next, chain three, miss and do DC and you want to do that all the way around and you will have 24 chain spaces when you're back at the beginning. But when you're back at the beginning, there's a slight difference and I'll come back and show you when I'm there. So I've gone all the way around and before I join, I, um, need to do a couple of different stitches and that's because if you were to just chain three and join it starts to go skewy and you don't meet in the middle of a chain which is what you want to do so that it all merges in and you don't see any joins sort of so chain one and then you need to make a half treble which is a half double in US speak and then you want to make it into the first DC of the round and I'll show you again on the next round and it'll be a bit clearer as to why you you do this so you do your half treble there and you're actually finishing as though you're in the middle of a chain space rather than at an end and that's important so that the bag is the right shape. So when you've done that, the next round, instead of three chains, it's four, one, two, three, four, and then you make a double crochet into the next chain space. So it's just a question of going to the next chain space and making a little stitch. And it's a repeat of that, chain four, and then going into the chain space with a double crochet, single crochet, one, two, three, four, and you do that all the way around. And then you join in a very similar way and you chain two and make a half double crochet. And what I've already forgotten to do is do my stitch marker. And as you can see already, it's just like, oh my God, where does it go? <laughs> so this is why you need one. Um, this is the middle, the chain, that four chain there is coming out of the middle of the stitch, so I know it's there, that's where you want it to go. It makes life a hell of a lot easier, as I've said. So chain four, DC, chain four, DC, all the way around, and then the join is very similar, which I'll show you. It just gets slightly bigger each time you do it, because your chains get slightly bigger and you want to match it. So I'm back at the beginning of round six, and I want to chain two and then half treble 
into where I've got my stitch marker. If you can undo it. So half treble, half US double into that initial train. And then remember to put your stitch marker in that one that you've just made. Okay, so it's acting as the centre of the chain space. The next round, row seven, round seven, you chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And make your DC in the chain space. And you do it all the way around. And then it's the same with round eight, um, only you chain six and round nine where you chain seven and that's where you stop. After round nine you do another, um, I think it's 16 rows of that round, so you're always chaining seven. And the joints at the beginning grow with the amount of chains you've got. And don't forget this is all written down on the pattern on my blog, so rather than me show you each and every round, um, go and have a look on the blog with the written pattern this one is joined with two half, two chains and a half treble as well. And the next one is two chains and one treble, so that's US double. And then round nine, which is chaining seven and joining all the way around, and that ends with three chains and a treble. And the principle is the same for all of them. It's just growing with the with the pattern. So this is what it looks like when I'm at round eight. So you can see that it's increasing outwards and I'll just join this one. So I've chained two already. I'll move my stitch marker and then it's a treble to join. And I think actually I decided to join the um, the one with all the chain fives to do chain two and then a treble as well, it looked better. So um, I've chained two and then I'm going to make a treble. Part of it's tension and stuff like that, so you might find a combination, a different combination suits you better. So you might want to chain three, it might match this better. Um, that's all part of crochet, experimenting and finding out what works best for you. So, as you can see, it is starting to build up now. The next round is um, seven chains, and then you just repeat that round, as I've said before, until the, um, the body starts to, oh, it's gone all dark, the body starts to work up. So this is actually now 20, 25 rows, 25 rounds from start to end point and I've lied because it's not it's 27 because what I did was up to 25 repeated the chain 7 and then for row 26 I went down to doing 6 chains and then row 27 I went down to doing 5 chains just so it wasn't completely um, like floppy open and gapy it just sort of brings it in slightly but without it being too too small um, it just creates a, a more stable structure so hopefully I've, I mean I've gone down yarn size and hook size and I hope you can still see this um, but what you want to do you're in the middle of a doobry I don't know what I've that looks like I've finished on a half treble Oh yeah, and there's row five. I'm going to change that to a treble. Let's change that to a treble. Half treble doesn't look right. So if you've just chained five, then let's say it's chain two and a treble to join. Don't listen to what I said earlier. Okie dokie. Chain one. And then make a DC into that join at the top. And then in this half of the chain space, sorry, let's try and get this out of the way. 
So I've just made a DC into the join at the top. Into this little chain space, I'm going to make two stitches of um, UK doubles, US singles. Like so. Oops. This is why I didn't do the whole tutorial in this stuff, because it's really splitty. Not only is it fine, it's splitty. Glad I made that choice now, cripes. Just going to do it again. So, in the tops of those joins, or whatever you want to call them, in all the tops, in all the DCs, they're not joins, in the DCs, in the tops, along the tops you make a DC, and in the chain spaces you make four stitches of UK doubles, US singles. So one, two, three, four, and then a DC in the top of the DC. I feel a sneeze coming on folks. I do apologize if I go, if I, if I lose it. And you do that all the way around. And then, when you get to the beginning, so you just do two more chain, two more DCs in there and then join with a slip stitch to that one. I've gone all the way around with those stitches and joined to the first stitch with a slip stitch. Um, for the next round, chain one, and again, a DC in the same space, and then you just DC all the way around, and you should have 120 stitches going all the way across, around. So, this is, um... I don't know, row 29, I think. <laughs> row 29, round 29, and then round, round 30 is the same. You're repeating this, you're just going around again. And that just creates a nice little top for the bag. And when you've gone around twice, it's time to do the handle. Shall we pretend that we're at the handle now. Make a few more stitches. What you want to do is let's say we have worked one, two, three, four, five, six of round 31. That's our handle start. So we've just joined with a slip stitch at round 30 and we're going to make the handle. So chain one and make a DC in the same stitch and then make six more double crochets. Turn and chain one. I hope it's okay to do this. It's cheating, isn't it? But um, it'll just give you um, the gist. The gist. So we've chained one and then one single crochet in the next six stitches. Did I say six? Seven. It doesn't really matter. My old bag used to have eight stitches across but I just want a slightly thinner handle but I don't want it too thin so I've just knocked off one stitch. So I'm going to do seven across and already I've stopped counting. As I said, it, the choice is yours. It depends on how much yarn you have left. La la la. Let's say it's that number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha! Uh -huh. Chain one and turn. And that's what you do all the way along to make your handle. Until it builds uh, up and up and up. And get super long, as long as you want. And don't forget that actually when you've got stuff in your bag, the weight pulls it down quite a lot. So what you think might be 
a sort of a, a generously long strap handle will stretch and go super long the whole bag I mean if you feel this bag it might look small at the minute but you can get a lot of stuff in there so just bear that in mind if you think it looks too small honestly it's not you can fit all your all your shopping in there no problem so yeah just go along keep doing that until it's the length you want it to be we have a look at this one it is bearing in mind I've used this one so it's stretched a wee bit it's that long and then when you put things in it's got stretch and then without twisting it you want to join it to the other side now this one I joined it from the inside so you can't see that seam but to be honest with you it doesn't really matter you could you could do it this way I mean that's the difference just a, a raised seam and all you do is I think I used um, that looks like slip stitches to me you just slip stitch to the other side making sure that you have an equal number of stitches this side and this side so I have a really long handle now it's super long and just perfect um, I want to join it now I've turned my bag inside out and I'll join it that way Based on what I hope is not dodgy maths, I've worked out that if I've got seven stitches here and seven stitches on, that I'll be joining on the other side, on either side I'll need I'll have 53 stitches so that it's even. Um, that's based on the fact that around here is 120 stitches. So what you want to do is join your handle to the other side. So. To do this, I don't want to chain one because that creates extra bulk. So I'll just get my hoop, my, my loop a little bit longer so I can work into the first stitch. And then, wherever that stitch marker was, I go in there, I yarn over and just slip stitch through all of those stitches. Whoops try not to spit the yarn in the process honestly this yarn isn't actually that splitty I promise so hopefully that was on camera because I wasn't actually looking you go in through both stitches on opposite sides yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on the hook for a slip stitch so you do that all the way across your seven stitches or however many it is you've done and then you can fasten off and sew in your ends you should have one end here and one end here and then you've you've got your bag nice handle turn it around the right way and go shopping so I hope you've liked that tutorial, I hope it's worked for you, I have other tutorials, I've got other free patterns on my blog, please do check it out, all the links are in the description box below, i.e. the link to this pattern, the link to my blog. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time, cheerio, bye bye.